Okay, hi. So today we are going to talk... So today we are going to talk about the deli pencils and um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to talk about these actually. So I have seen a few reviews on YouTube and uh, I was like I'm picking them up. <laughs> As a as a owner of a small shop, I order quite a lot of stuff from China and AliExpress and Alibaba. I'm pretty comfortable around there, so I thought uh, I'm going to pick these up next time I make a big order, and I did. So these are from AliExpress. I paid around two hundred Swedish crowns. That is about twenty euros. They're about, I mean, the price goes up and down. Um, and I have to say they were shipped quite quickly. You know, it is still, you know, um, that time uh, we are in. I bought these in 2020, so you know what kind of things is going around then. Uh, but they came relatively quickly. They were very well packaged. I did not, none of the pencils were broken or anything, so they were really well. Uh, I don't have them in here because I don't like storing pencils in these kind of tins. But I did save it just to share that they're here. They come with this little transparent thing. And then uh, I got the 72 set, so they are in two little shelves. So if you want to have all of your pencils laid down like this, works perfectly. I just prefer having my pencils in those little um, books. So right now I have this a pretty flower little case and in here I have the deli pencils and I like to store them somewhat together. So reds and yellows and then I like to have the blues with the purples, the greens, and then the browns. That's just how it works for me. Uh, I also have the Castle Art. I have made a video about this, and I, uh, I'm going to... that. This is the only other sort of student budget grade pencil, so I'm going to do a little bit of comparison. You can see I have used these a little bit more. You can see some of the pencils are quite short. So first off, um, just looking at the pencils, if we started there, I think they look really, really nice. They, I love colored pencils that are the same, like the whole pen is that color. Uh, so Faber-Castell or Prismacolor, I really love having them all in one like this is that green. Um, so for example, the Castle Art, I I, I do like the matte black, but I don't, I prefer having like the whole barrel being one color. Uh, and it's also one of the things with the... So in here I have my like more artist grade pencils. So the Faber-Castell is the same, like you have that, the whole pen is that color. But with the, with the Duravent you have the actual barrel color is is one color to represent like what line that pencil is in and then you just have a very short dipped end and I don't like that. I like to see like a very quick and easy, I like to see that this is that green I want. So that's just personal for me. So that is one extra plus for the Deli pencils that they are uh, the whole thing. Uh, the silver looks very nice and clean. They, it says color pencil, they have a number, and then it says deli, and then they have a silver band. The only thing that I don't like about this is that that is the only thing we have on the pencil. Now, once again, something that is personal for me anyway, is that I associate color with a name. So if this was called, I don't know, it doesn't really matter, but that number, that is not going to stick in my head that the color I want is 148. That is not, uh, that is not going to work. So for, with the Faber-Castell you have, and with the Prismacolors you have the number and you also have the name. And I wish that they would have like removed this like color pencil. I know it's a color pencil. Like, I can see the colors, uh, and instead just give them a name. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, original names like such. 
It could just be like green one, two, three, whatever. But just seeing that name, I think would have made a difference. Um, but I mean, yeah. So that is one thing that I wish, but yeah, I mean, I think it's still good that they have something that you can identify them. So if you have done a, a swatch chart and you you can give them your own name, you know, but um, yeah, so that is just one thing. Also, um, pen that it comes with, it also comes with a silver and a gold. I don't use that, but you know, here they are. It doesn't really matter. Um, they are a hundred and 75 millimeters and they say that they are 7.6 millimeters in diameter. I feel like they they feel skinnier but then when I have compared them to like the Fabric Castell which is my personal choice I don't actually think they are they are skinnier. I don't have one of those that can measure here but uh, from the measurements I can make, I feel like they are very, very similar. So I think it comes down to the weight that the wood or the core of the fabric castell is even, it might be that the core is thicker or that the wood is just denser. I don't know, it, but they, they definitely feel lighter and um, they feel a little bit skinnier. If that is just something I've made up, that could definitely be. <laughs> but that is just an observation. For the design, they look really nice. They are easy to work with. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about, I mean, I want to talk about everything, <laughs> but, um, so this is this the biggest set you can get with the deli pencils, and it is the set of 72 pencils. I have to say, I'm really happy with the color selection. I think it's a really beautiful selection of colors. We have, I mean, it's definitely a very vibrant, rich color set. And I feel like we are missing maybe a little bit of those very, very light colors. But on the whole, I think it's a beautiful uh, set. And I think if you think about this being aimed as, as a budget pencil and maybe more for adult coloring, I think it's a really good, good set that can fill very many functions. So the only thing I feel is, especially on this section where we have like the warm colors, like these, we have three peaches that is very, very similar. Uh, and also a few of the yellows, they look very much identical. And we also have a few pink here, especially this one I'm a little bit confused with because the barrel is fairly light, but the core is quite deep. <laughs> so <laughs> that is one thing. Uh, so I feel like there is very similar color. It's not that they have a shift, it just feel like they are the same. Um, but on the other side and the other colors, I feel like we have a much more like there is a variation. So, but it could also be that they feel like you might use these kind of peachy colors a lot. So they wanted to include more because you can't buy them in open stock. I don't know. But I really like the the colors that they have. I really like the, uh, I'm not a big orange fan, but I really like these orangey colors. I really like those. Of course, my favorite colors are purples, greens, and browns. That's the ones I use the most. Uh, and I really like the purples. They have like a really nice assortment of like very pinky purples and more like like bluey purples. And then also these are some of my favorite. They are very sort of whiny colors. That, not whiny as in they are annoying, but wine as in the drink. <laughs> Uh, I feel like those are really nice with shadows and adding depth to brown colors. I really love having these colors. Also, we, we don't have a lot of uh, neutral uh, uh, black and grays, but I feel like the ones we do have is very nice. We also have this color that looks black, but of course now when I'm trying to be all prepared, I'm not all prepared. Why is that? I don't know. Okay, we're going to use this swatch page. This is crayon, so we don't need to focus on that. But this is not black. Uh, I mean, it is black, but it has sort of like a pinky purpley undertone, which is just really, really nice. So there is something. Uh, the greens are definitely more on the uh, vibrant 
blue leaning greens. I prefer like the murky sappy greens but you know that's a personal preference. I really like them. Uh, and also the browns. I really really like the browns. Uh, we have some really nice rich burnt ochre looking colors. We have some warm browns and some cooler browns. We have a very very deep one. This one is almost black leaning like a really nice sepia color. I really really like this one instead of using black. So it's 164. It's beautiful. And also these two colors. I love these two colors. Um, they are the perfect sort of building red. That sort of English uh, red iron oxide. Yeah, really, really happy to have those. Now, another thing when it comes to these pencils that I've noticed is the sharpening of them. So when you get them, I'm going to see if I have some that isn't used. I have tried to save a few. So when they come, they they are sharpened. So they are all swatched, but I haven't sharpened it. So they don't have that sharp edge on it. Um, and when I got them, I was like, because they were described as being oily, very pigmented, and easy to work with. And I was like, yeah, I mean, but they couldn't really like layer that much. I mean, this is a bad example because this one colors beautifully. But what I did notice was if I just give them a sharpen, they work just fine. So my tip is when you get them, sharpen them so you get that um, coating off them and they work beautifully. Um, and then it's also something I've noticed with the sharpening is that they, some of them, uh, so for example this one is quite short and that is, I have used it quite a lot, I mean it's a beautiful green, <laughs> but also I used the wrong sharpener where it sort of rattle around and when I just found the right sharpener it just, it worked beautifully. So just find a good sharpener that fits the pencil. I mean, I think that goes for every pen. But yeah, so on the whole, I think these are really nice um, quality for what you're paying for. Um, they look better quality and especially the wood is not as nice as the Faber-Castell, but it's definitely, definitely better than the Castle Art. The Castle Art wood just I mean, there's a mystery why you don't get splinters when you color with them. So these are definitely better. I can see a little bit of a crack here, but yeah, they look, they're so nice, so easy to work with. So that is definitely a big plus. So nice color, nice core and really good wood. So now talking about actually coloring with them. I have done a few pages just because I felt like uh, when I did a video about the castle art pencils I went in like almost blind you know like this is a first impression but with the deli pencils I really wanted to give them a fair try and I really wanted to try them out before I gave my opinion so that I felt like um, it was more like a review. So I did a page uh, in this lovely, lovely book, and now the result I am not too happy with, but that's down to me picking colors. Um, so the the thing that I'm really bothered by is the background, but that's I really want to see how much I could layer these pencils. So if you just disregard my horrendous color picking for this image. The pencils are really nice to work with. And this was the first thing I did with these pencils and I felt like, uh, I think I started with the blue and the mushrooms here and I was like, I did, they don't really blend that well. I'm like, they don't really want to layer. But that's when I realized you need to sharpen them so you get that coating off. And once you did that, everything was fine. Uh, they were really nice to work with. You can go in and add layer after layer. They do that really, really well. I think I have started another, yeah, I just, uh, I haven't gone too far here, but they are really nice to work with and they are a softer core pencil, so you do quite easily get pigment down on paper, but you can still sharpen them and they hold their point fairly well, so I can go into these little raspberries and add the details without having to sharpen all, all the time. So I think that's that's really nice of them. 
So when I had done that, I felt like I want to try uh, something that has a little bit more surface and see how that goes. Now, keep in mind, I, uh, I am a new colorist, so we don't judge my actual coloring here. <laughs> so I wanted to try something that has a little bit more surface areas and see how well they look when you get them all laid down. And this took me a pretty long time to do, not because of the pencil, just, you know, life stuff. And I've had this up like in my bedroom, so sometimes, you know, in an afternoon or uh, before I go to bed or a Sunday morning or, you know, something just... Uh, so it's not something I have been work like, dedicated time to. But I've had really good time. And I, here I have tried to really uh, layer and really get a nice variety of colour. And so I'm really happy with the colours I got here on the house. Now it is, this paper is thinner and it's very very smooth compared to the paper in this book. So it doesn't, it won't take pencils as richly, it doesn't have that tooth to grab hold of it. But as you can see I've had no problem laying down the colours, I can go back and have layered, uh, especially the fence and this sort of barn area, I have gone in with several different colours and layered and I'm really happy with it. Now I do feel like you have to add a little bit of pressure, so sometimes I just like, okay I can't, I have to stop because uh, the colour and the pigment went down, I just felt like I had to add too much pressure uh, to really get that. But yeah, so that is one thing, but I'm really happy with how smooth the colours look. I I don't get any weird strokes, in, in case, like here in the grass, I have of course chosen to get that kind of strokes. Um, but with the colour, I was very rough in the blending of these little flowers here, but they blend out really, really well. So on the whole, I'm really happy with these pencils. So I thought, why not do some colouring on this one? So this is a printable up in the shop. Uh, it's a mer donkey um, because it's mermaid and I don't paint a lot of human. So I thought, why not a donkey? It is printed out on a Bristol board, which is very, very smooth. So I thought, why not see how these pencils act on this type of paper? Let's do the tail because the tail is pretty and I'm going to pick a color I haven't really used a lot. I think I'm going to use these two, um, one, four, six and one, three, eight. And they look to be sharpened. So I'm just going to go to it. And I think I'm going to go quite softly here. Now, like I said, this is a very smooth paper, so I don't have any texture to sort of help me here. So I need to just be a little bit careful. And you can see the color goes down very, very nicely. But also, because there is no texture, I can't really hide if I mess up either. So I'm just going to give the tail here, a very nice light wash with this colour. And then I'm going to use the other to add, start adding in a little bit of depth. And to make sure I'm giving myself the best um, start I can, I have a pad of paper underneath so I don't cut it directly on my desk. I'm not going, going to continue with the one Three, eight, and this is just slightly bluer and I'm going to use that to start adding in the shadows and start building up the the values on this little fishtail. Okay, so we have now a very lightly colored fishtail and I want to go in even darker, but before I do that, I'm going to start on the donkey so that I know what kind of values we're dealing with up here so I can match that later down here. And I think I want to do a fairly traditional looking donkey. So I think I want it very 
brownie grey-ish just because um, I know it's not like the most like the fun colouring of a donkey but that's what we're going to go with um, and I'm going to start off with this lightest grey that is 165 and I'm also going to start off I'm sorry, the camera cut out, but I'm starting with light grey 165 and a burnt ochre 154. This will be the base of the actual donkey body. So the typical donkeys that we see usually have um, a pretty warm grey colour. Now, of course, there is different breeds of donkey, just there are of horses. But the donkeys that I have met typically are this, like a warmer brown with uh, with lighter areas around their face. So that's what I'm going for right here. I'm not as pony-like anyway <laughs> as donkeys typically are, but you know it's a fancy, it's a fancy mer donkey. So right now I just want to get the base layer down so I have something to work with. I'm also trying to remember that they are lighter on their belly. And of course we need to shadow that but I also want to preserve this white space for them. You can see this colour is very very light. So I've been doing that. Now I want to add in even darker of a grey and I have two other greys I have one uh, six six and one six seven and you can clearly see so we're going to start with the lighter and then move over to the bigger one and I want to add in some details with this because we have the mane here but over the shoulder donkeys usually have this uh, band that continues up over the um, over the back but I just want to remember to put that in. I'm just going to do that very lightly and that will also add into my donkiness here. That is going to be black later but I just want to put it in now so I don't forget. Also they are typically very very dark here then fades out to white and then uh, we go back to sort of a yellow and then back to grey here. And it's about now when I'm like, if only I had watercolour. <laughs> yeah. But we don't, we have colour pencils. Now working with both watercolour and colour pencil, that's really fun. And you can get amazing results with that. But I think also it's very nice to know just how much you can achieve with only one of them. So I'm going to colour this one a little bit darker, being in behind that leg. But remembering that he's going to fade up to that sort of browny colour. Okay, so with this grey colour that I have here, what I'm going to do is, we are now on the third layer of the body here, and I feel like I'm starting to get a very nice of that um, sort of brown, warm brown grey colour <laughs> that they have. I do want it to be a little bit darker later, but what I want is just to add in a hint of a shadow between these fins here. So I'm just very lightly going to add in where well, I'm seeing that line and then you're going to follow that do it a little bit sharply and then fade it out just so it really looks like the body is disappearing so here we have that line I'm going to do that and then just sort of fade in just so it looks like the body is like disappearing into it Okay. 
So I'm liking that, but I feel like I want to add in a little bit more of a brownie color. So I'm going to go with 153. And it's a more of a... Where the one I started off with is more like a burnt ochre color. This one is a little bit cooler. And I'm not going all the way to the eye because they usually have like a white rim around the eyes. So I'm going to try to preserve that and then fade out. And that is a marking that is very typical for, for donkeys but also for the uh, sort of working horses, especially the working horses we have here in Sweden. They are pretty much all uh, standardly colored like this. With the uh, with the face covering, uh, they usually have like a more brown body, but and now I'm just going to merge them together, and now I feel like I like where it's going, so I'm going to add in a little bit more pressure to add a little bit stronger of the color value, and I can soon go in with this darker one too. I just want to add in a little bit more detail. With the one just, so I'm trying to keep as few pencils as possible when I'm working uh, and then like so if I have three or four on hand but I try not to switch between too many because it makes me confused so <laughs> that's sad okay so here's a place where I'm going to go in with that darker later on and preserving that highlight a bit. Okay, time to sharpen this one. And I know I sharpened the wrong way, but you know, life. I'm going in with 164, that is that really deep sort of sepia brown color. Okay, so now we have a little donkey. We need to fix the mane, of course, and I'm just going to go in with sort of the same color here. Uh, the mane typically is like a darky brownish color. I'm just going to spin him around to make it easier on my, my hands. I like to think, um, to remember, is that when you have a breeds like this or a donkey, is that they typically have lighter tips of their mane or tail. Uh, they can almost become a little bit goldish or copperish color. So I'm trying to keep my dark color as much as I can close to the neck and then fade out when it comes to the tips. Okay, so now when we have sort of like the donkey, I feel like I can add in a little bit more depth to the tail here. And um, I'm going to go with, <laughs> with my short green one. It is, oh, the number is out. One, four, two, I think. And I'm just going to add in a little bit. I'm going to try to avoid the scales. They will be like in highlight. Okay, so the last things I want to do is just add a little bit more shine-ish 
to to detail. So I'm going to go in with a yellow color and I'm going to go in with a very light one. I think it is four, no, one or four. One or oh four. <laughs> So just where I have sort of saved a few of the highlights, I just want to add a little bit. So on the scales here and so what I have preserved a little bit, just we get a little bit of sense of shimmer. Now, of course, you can go in and add all the scales if you want to, but yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm not going to, so. I'm just going to add in a nice layer here of yellow all over to sort of blend it all together, sort of. Now, I see amazing artist um, work and uh, you can't tell that it's colour pencil. I don't really mind, I kind of like the, the texture and uh, as you can see here, you can still see the paper through in some places. And I don't really mind. I think it's a part of the charm with working with colour pencils that you can see that. But if you don't want to, just buff away and uh, yeah, you can definitely achieve that with these pencils. I just really enjoy that you can go in quite lightly with them and they just keep layering and um, that's just a, a personal thing. So just keep that in mind. I don't I don't like working hard with with pencils because my hands are like typically quite sore so I don't want to feel like I need to work with the color pencil I just want to or work against them I suppose I just want to enjoy the process uh, I'm going to do this lower fin with that sort of yellow too and that way we can get a sense that this one is laying under. I think I like that. I'm going to go in a little bit again with uh, 138. I can't, I can't with these numbers. <laughs> I'm really trying, but the numbers is... Mm, that's hard. Which it really shouldn't be because... Uh, the pigments, a lot of the pigments I have are just, um, they don't really have names, they have a code, a number, a few letters, and I can remember that, but with colour pencils, I'm like... Uh, and this is my definitely favourite part with these pencils, is that you can layer them so very lightly and get a very nice faded look with them, without even trying. Just, I uh, really like that. Mm. I'm just going to add a few more details, uh, a little bit more, and then, uh, then I'm going to be done. I promise. <laughs> So, in conclusion, the Delhi 72 sets, um, would I recommend them? Yeah, definitely. I think they are, they are amazing. I thoroughly enjoy working with these pencils. Um, I feel like they layer really nicely. They are very creamy to work with, they, but they still hold their point. They are not as good as the Fabricastel, obviously. I mean... Uh, we need to remember like what we are comparing and contrasting here. So I, I would say that they are softer than the Faber-Castell. Like they're not uh, uh, close to the Color Soft by Dervent or, or Prisma. But I like having a little bit of a tougher pencil because I like to layer. So just keep that in mind. I'm really happy with the result I could get here on this very, very smooth paper. I mean, usually this Bristol paper is what I use when I uh, <laughs> venture into alcohol markers. Now, remember, keep in mind, I'm a watercolorist first and foremost. Color pencils um, and alcohol markers are definitely uh, an additive 
and something I like to mix together, but it's definitely more I'm a hobbyist when it comes to pe uh, color pencils. But from my testing um, and comparing to the different brands that I have, I really, really like it. I highly recommend them for the price if you can get them. Yeah, they're definitely worth the way to ordering from AliExpress uh, for them to take longer to arrive. Yeah, uh, I can say to 89% I will buy another set just to have. I am not one to stock, on, stock up on art supplies. I feel like I should use them. But yeah, there is a very, very big chance I will just get another backup set because I really, really enjoy them. When it comes to the Castle Art pencils, uh, I don't want to use them because I just feel like they are... Um, I mean, the core is fine to work with, but they are a pain in the butt to sharpen. The, the pencils you can see here, they are very, very short. They are not short because I've used them a ton. Well, I mean, uh, it's mostly because they just keep breaking when I sharpen them. So I, yeah, I mean, they're nice, but yeah, but the deli pencils, yeah, definitely. And just for the brown selection, I really love the brown selection. So that is my conclusion, my final thoughts. I hope I have said something that gives you, um, an answer if you feel like, yeah, I've been thinking about this. Yes, maybe not. But they are a pleasure to work with. I love them, especially the way I color with layer upon layer upon layer. It works really, really well. I like that I can get very nice, soft uh, uh, la uh, layers done with it. Now, one thing I didn't mention before, but I really want to to say is that though they are very nice and soft to work with, once in a while you will get a color where you get like a dry spot where it drags and you just need to sharpen that away. So far it, ha it has happened a few times but I've been able to sharpen that spot away and then you just carry on. But there's something to, to bear in mind that the quality control can't be as high as, you know, the artist grade pencil. But for a budget, for the price, definitely uh, I highly recommend if you like a more like the Faber-Castell kind of pencil, a little bit harder. I really like them. Okay, that is it. That is all that I can say. That is all that I know. And I am just very, very happy with with the colors and what I can do with them. So thank you so much for watching. I hope it has, <laughs> you have enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, check back on Saturday for another studio vlog where we talk more about watercolor where I feel a little bit more at home. So <laughs> bye. Yeah. Not helping, not helping. Albert.